$5,000 can buy you five iPhone 15 Pros. It can buy you 30 years of YouTube Premium, it can also buy you 1,600 Feastable Bars. But what if I told you it can buy you one camera with a fixed lens that you can't even take off and, and there's no zoom. This is the Leica Q2, which according to the internet is one of the best cameras of all time. Leicas are one of those, if you know, you know kind of things. The average person knows what a Canon Rebel is probably because everybody's uncle had one and they used it for your graduation photos. Um. There's also this Leica look, which makes everything look cinematic and like a film. Anyways, going from your iPhone to a Leica is like driving a Civic your whole life and then hopping into a Porsche. And I know what that's like because I used to shoot Porsches and Ferraris every single day. The moment that I jumped into one, it felt like my frontal lobe was fully developed. I ascended into a new level of consciousness and being. Yeah, I'm gonna roll the windows down. DT3, let's go. Oh my Jesus. Will going from my pro-grade cameras feel like going from a Civic to a Bentley? Yes, I got to experience that too. I'm giving myself 24 hours with the Leica Q2. I wanna see if it can swoon me. Consider this another Netflix romance special. I'ma judge this thing based on four things. Number one, is the fixed lens a limitation? or will the 47 megapixels make up for that lack of range? Number two, is the Leica look real or is it all hype? Number three, is the battery life catastrophic or is it usable? And number four, does it take photos I'd expect from a $5,000 setup or should I continue to opt for my cheaper setups? I hit up lens rentals, got the Q2 overnight into Kansas City. Let's see if we can beat it there. I went to Kansas City to shoot content of the Chiefs Parade and the Q2 did in fact beat me to Kansas City. I opened the lens rentals box and I saw the Q2 with an extra battery. And the thing about the Kansas City Chiefs Parade is once you're in a spot, you're there. That's, that's where you're at for like, I don't know, probably eight hours of the day. So we drop our things off at the Airbnb and immediately get to work. It's officially the first hour with the camera. We check out the world-class Nelson Atkins Museum of Art to discover that it's closed. That's fine because we can shoot areas of the outside which are beautiful. We wander around and I'm just shooting anything that's remotely interesting. I think in my head, what would Peter McKinnon do here? What would Peter McKinnon shoot? And then I would just shoot that. Christian put the drone up and got some awesome footage. I mean, he just got everything that looked beautiful and he got like the skyline in the back. It's all pretty. The next hour is upon us and the sun starts going down. So we head back to the Airbnb to plan for the big day that's ahead. Out of pure curiosity, I take the photos from the SD card and I put them in Lightroom. This camera's supposed to blow my mind. So I wanna see to what level it's actually gonna do that. I mean, there's only so much you could see on that tiny little screen on the back. So I upload these to Lightroom and to my surprise, damn. Why does this look like a film? Why is this higher resolution than my eyeballs? I feel like a National Geographic cinematographer, the way that I'm capturing a movie from my point of view, but I'm not supposed to be liking this camera. Am I enjoying this camera? After eating some delicious Kansas City barbecue, we decide that we need to get some nighttime shots and we don't know how close we can get to everything because security is really crazy and there's a lot of boundaries everywhere. So we go to the World War One Memorial. Nighttime presents us with a huge challenge. If you've ever taken a photo at night, you know that cameras typically fall apart at this time of day. I snap some photos of Christian. Christian snaps some photos of me. I get the skyline shots of Kansas City, which is honestly one of the better skylines that I've seen, just being completely candid. And it makes it a little hard because a really unique challenge presented itself. There's no flippy screen. My S5 Mark II, the one I'm shooting on, has a flippy screen. I mean, it's over here doing acrobatics and stuff right next to it. And this, this GH6 right here, look at this, look at this. You seeing this? The GH6 is doing gold medal Olympian feats over here. Look at that. It's got a flippy screen and it tilts. I don't even know what I need that for, but it does it. We wrap up and you know what time it is. It's Lightroom time. I pop the photos in there, slap on the OG Dante preset. And again, I am upset. Why is the quality so good? Why are the colors top notch? Why is it so clear? And why is the detail so ridiculous? I hate what I'm becoming. I'm falling in love right now. I've been so loyal to these Panasonic cameras. And here I am on Temptation Island with a Leica Q2. And it's tempting me. I've been tempted, but I am a loyal man. One night of fun is not enough to throw away a good thing. Tomorrow, 
you will prove yourself to me. This is the day, the main event, the Chiefs Parade. Uh, people take this event beyond seriously. Like people will camp out the night before and by 6 a.m., before the sun's even come up, you're fighting with people for a good spot. We arrived at 7 a.m., thankfully, because by eight o'clock, where you are, is where you are. I'll show you pictures that I got. It, you're already there, you're stuck. I snapped a few detail shots before I got settled into my spot. Everything was fire, and then I got settled in. Little did I know, I chose quite possibly the shittiest spot I could have ever chosen. I went into the spot with great intentions because I could see everything down the massive street. I had a straight shot. Everything was perfect. I was gonna make a movie out of this. After standing stagnant for three hours, we finally begin to see people. And because I have that beautiful shot, I can see everybody coming down and get some great footage. That is until the freaking news guy decides to vault himself 20 feet in the air. And then he's just sitting there with his big rig camera. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm getting a good shot which blocks every view for the parade viewers. Like, come on now. And then on top of it, on top of it, every every police officer within like a tri-county area of Kansas City decides that right in front of us is the perfect place to post up. So you know what this caught? This creates a barrier between us and the people, the players and stuff. Yeah, so nobody wants to come over and interact with us. I can't see anything. And then everyone's going over to everyone else. Because of this, I don't feel like it's fair to judge the camera based on that day because I didn't even really get to get a ton of great things. I feel like I needed another day with it to properly judge its capabilities. I went to the lens rental site, I extended it by a day, and that changed my return date to Friday. I went out to dinner at Rated Test Kitchen for the lovers event because it was Valentine's Day. So I took it with me, snapped some amazing photos, and the camera just continues to impress. I'm beginning to see the $5,000 worth of value in this camera. I bring it to the studio Friday morning, I bring it up here, snap some really cool photos, and then the unthinkable happens. I got an email telling me to keep the camera forever. No, that actually didn't happen. I'll tell you what really happened though. Mother Nature decided to wake up and she chose violence that day. She dumped five inches of snow on the St. Louis area in a matter of like an hour and a half. and. The roads were not treated, nothing was ready. I'm sitting here panicking because I have to get this camera to FedEx, but now I have no way of getting it there because the roads are not drivable. So I call Lens Rentals, I explain the situation, let them know that we got an unexpected snowstorm and they were really understanding of the whole thing. You know, they, they were like, just return it whenever it's safe to return it. Can we talk about great customer service? The camera was boxed up. I returned it on Monday, sent it on its merry way, and that gave me a lot of time to reflect. Is the fixed lens a limitation or will 47 megapixels make up for the lack of range? It was a limitation. There's no zooming. If I wanted a closer shot, I had to physically move closer, but there's a lot of clarity and detail in that and I can zoom in like crazy. I mean, look how much I can zoom in on this photo. So for that, I will give it a light pass. Is the Leica look really a thing or is it all hype? To be honest, I think there's a look, but I don't think it's as drastic as people make it out to be. But there is a clear, distinct look. I can tell which one of my photos were taken with the Q2 versus my S5 II. And that's even with using Leica certified lenses on these cameras. So again, I give this a light pass. Is the battery life catastrophic or is it usable? I really feel strongly about this one because there is no capability to charge this thing with USB. I actually bought a battery pack for that day, the battery pack was useless because there was no way to plug it in. So I just had to have another battery. So like, and you can't even plug the, the battery thing into USB either. So I'm gonna be honest, I give this a light fail. Does it take photos I'd expect from a $5,000 setup? For videography, it's no contest. I'm not even considering the Leica in the equation. I'm choosing one of these two cameras because the S5 II, you can see the video quality out of it. And this thing is even crazier than this. But when I'm on shoots, I would probably have the Leica around my neck so I can get BTS and also get stills of certain scenes that I'm shooting. I want to diss this camera. I really do. I want to not like this camera and not buy into the hype, but I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. It's it's great. Lens Rentals, thank you for providing me with the opportunity to shoot with this camera. I know that the person that I spoke with on the phone, she was really excited to see what kind of Chiefs content I got, which 
I'm sorry, I've disappointed you, I've let you down. There's not like a crazy amount of content out there. Use the link below. It's, it, we'll both get a kickback from it. And to be honest with you, I highly just recommend renting gear if you're ever needing something that's like super expensive for a shoot. Cause think about it. I could have bought this camera for like five grand or rented it for the couple hundred bucks. So that's it, mic drop. Don't forget to hit subscribe so I can actually get this thing someday and continue to make videos. Yeah, I'll see you in the next one.